Yo, welcome back. So today I am currently on the rewire, which was in my previous video, or actually I don't know which one I'm gonna put out first, probably the one before where I'm in the loft. But I'm doing the gas bonding. So what we've done, if I show you down here, I'm filming off my phone. Um, Nick's drilled through and that's the gas bonding. It's a 10 mil. Um, um, here he is. He's here. He's here. Oh God, that dropped a bit, that did. Ooh. Your pad locked out. You're not allowed for it. No! But yeah, so I'm doing the gas bonding. Um, we've done the outside socket and Nick decided to drill through and plaster it. Covered it. Cover, cover it. The reason I drilled it below as well, I didn't want to break the back of the box or anything. So we have drilled one of these before, it's cracked in it. Yeah. So uh, hence, I'd rather bring it out and we can take it up. Adam will feed it up with the pipe, but I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be drilling some stuff, so just let me know as when you're filming, all right? Yeah, all right, sound. Um, so yeah, this is a 10 mil, um, which we've run both to our gas and water bonding. So I fed the 10 mil through um, using the old existing hole the plumber's made in this box, which is plenty big enough for the gas pipe and my cables and stuff room for it to move. And I'm going to leave a good length on this, put a nice pigtail on it, and then put the um, gas clamp there so that it's a good connection within 350 mil, is it? 300 mil. And then we've got a surprise guest of Dave Tavery. Popping up like a bad penny. I just came up here to skank these PCBs that I found in the rain. Yeah. Well, I'm something useful on there. Yeah, bit of, bit of electronics you look like, don't you? Do, uh, wish I knew what I was doing with it, but never mind. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. Why am I here? I don't know, you're just supervising me. That's what I, you're doing. I was just going to the pub up the road. Yeah, supervising me. <laughs> supervising, yeah. <laughs> Sound, right. I'll uh, get this clamp on and then I'll show you using the heat shrink, um, crimping it on. So I've just asked Nick for something to put a pigtail in. Obviously you need something circular or round to coil this round and put a nice pigtail in it. So you've got a bit of slack really and it just looks nice, but we'll see how it turns out. And he gave me a broom. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what you're going to use it for. Also, I'm uh, betraying Maryland's gone to the Fox's Venus Wills, are they called that? Something like that, but yeah, they're quite good as well. So, foxes get at me. Another thing is the earth clamp. What Nick's always taught me to do is, and college to be fair, is to slide that off the safety warning electrical tag. So, you have to obviously have to have that on there. Um, so to take that off and use that hole there and put that actually, if I pinch it with my knees, and put that tag on the actual top. So it's a lot easier to see and more visible rather than it looped around the actual pipe. So I've just come to mounting the earth clamp on the actual gas pipe. And what I've figured out is it kind of does look like you can fit a screwdriver in there, but if I grab the screwdriver, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't fit. So what I'm going to be using to tighten this up onto the gas pipe, obviously I need both hands to do this. Well, what I like to do is hold it tight, then screw it up, obviously to get a good connection. So what I'm going to be using is, if I just bend down and get it, the Weira Toolshed Plus. I'm going to use the ratchet attachment or maybe the Diddy little screwdriver to do that up and get it nice and tight and secure. But I'll come back to you once that's secure on the pipe. So I've made the rookie error of fastening that onto the pipe, getting it nice and secure so it's not moving. Then realising, even though 10 seconds earlier, I told you guys to put that little earth tag thing on there so you don't forget and i forgot so i'm gonna have to take all that off put it on well just undo that screw put it on and then uh, then i'll get to uh, putting the pigtail in the cable so the next stage i do is figure out all my, how much cable i want so as you can see there that's reaching to where i need and obviously i want to leave a bit to do the pigtail so i'll probably cut it about there so you've got a good length and then once you've got that enough then i'll cut it and i'll show you wrapping it around the broom. So to get that pigtail effect, what you have to do is, I've put, measured out where, I need to, let me take this off and I'll show you. So I've measured out, that takes me to where I need it, the pigtail start. And then obviously you can see there, I put a bend around the broom. Brush, I don't, cover, don't know why I keep calling it a broom. And then it's a bit hard one handed, but basically you have to keep bending it around and around and around in a circle motion like that, tight to the broom. So, it creates that form and then give it a couple, couple 20 seconds like that. So it holds that motion and it forms that pigtail effect. So I'll do it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that's hard to kind of film and do, but that's what you're trying to get at, something like that. 
So then you can hold it in that position for a good, like I said before, 20 seconds. And then once you let go, it should hold that form. So if I let go now, you see how it's kind of stayed like that? And then as you pull it off, you'll um, separate them out a bit to create a good shape, even spacing. So that's what I'm going for, somewhere along them lines. So it's just really, a lot of people do it just to leave a bit of extra slack. Um, but yeah, you don't have to do it. A lot of people don't, a lot of people do. It's just, Depends how you've been brought up really to do it. But then obviously I'll use that end to terminate it. But leaving a nice pigtail, it just looks good really. Now I'm gonna use the Nipex crimpers, which I'm holding between my legs, and a 10 mil earth bonding crimp. So to get the right size in, I literally just slide it on. And as you can see there, I've still got copper shown, which we don't want. So I'm gonna snip that down a bit. And then once I've got the right length and that's um, then terminated on, crimped on. I'll show you putting the heat shrink over and then using the lighter. You can get heat shrink gu heat guns or heat shrink guns, which we did have one, but it was a 110 one. Obviously, you need like a generator or nothing, a transformer to use it. Right, so this is a real world situation. Um, we don't have any bigger heat shrink. This is the biggest we've got. I already put it on before I crimped it, but I've literally got all of them out. We've got the world's biggest and then the world's smallest, but. We ain't got any bigger earth, we've used it all, so not a lot I can do about that. But obviously that's going to go back on there, like so. Right, so it's a bit of a shame about the heat shrink. Obviously we've got that heat shrink, but it's not really doing anything. Um, but yeah, I've screwed it on now, so that's nice and tight. Using the washer pinches um, the earth log. And it's got a nice pigtail on it, so when you open it up, it looks quite nice. So this is the water one I've done inside. I didn't really show you this one as it's a repeat process of the one outside. But as you can see, this one, the pigtail's a lot nicer. What's the reason we pigtail it for, mate? Any idea? I just said to leave slack. Yeah, that's it, well done. Yeah. If the plumber ever comes to move the pipes in, if you've got some stuff still there. Yeah, or say like here, we've left slack above in the boxing to pull down, and then there's a bit of slack on the pigtail as well, as they're having a new kitchen, so stuff's gonna be like jigged around a bit. So just for that really, just for the customer, like homeowner's sake, just to make their life a bit easier or any trades in the future. But I think that's bringing us, I am currently, if I show you, under a sink kitchen cupboard. And that's pretty much bringing us towards the end of this video as I've done this water one, I've done the gas one. They're the only two type of bondings you typically have in a domestic house. You don't really have any steel work that needs. Yeah, true. And a lot, yeah, I'm hooked on the ceiling. In a lot of older properties, you would find that you had cross bonding, whereas you don't really have that now. So that's bringing us towards the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.